Well, welcome back to the channel. Hello. And today, I want to talk about a show that we both grew up with. And now that I'm thinking about it, may not have been the best influence for us and other black folks over the years. Why, did you, why do you say that? We're going to get into that. It was a great influence. I, you got to prove me wrong, so we'll get into that. Okay. Today we're talking about the classic, iconic show, Good Times. It ran for six seasons from through from nineteen seventy four through nineteen seventy nine. Let me just say that for me, I was born in the seventies. My memory of the show is in the eighties because it was in syndication. It was on every day along with Sanford and Son and the Jeffersons. My view of this show comes from someone who watched it growing up on a daily basis. I didn't get the you know one new episode every week that some people may have gotten. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I think that Good Times wasn't necessarily the best influence for the black community? Mm -hmm. Well, first, let me talk about the creator. All right? Norman Lear is, is, is the head guy behind the show along with Mike Evans, who played Lionel um, on the Jeffersons, he was, the, he was their son, and Eric Monty, another writer, another black man. Norman Lear is a white guy. <clears throat> so the premise of the show is a poor black family in the projects of Chicago. And their basic struggle to get by, but that even though they were struggling, they were still okay with their lives and it was the good times. But they struggled all the time. And my issue with the show is that it didn't necessarily say that it was okay to be poor and struggling, but it did normalize it. And it normalized it for too many black people and for any white people watching, you know, from the outside. They they would also get a normalized view of black life that we're poor, we live in the projects, and we're struggling to get by, and we're okay because it's the good times. But when they trying to get out? They were, and when did they actually get out? Like They had to have something fortunate happen to them to get out. Well, that happens to a lot of black families, so mm -hmm. it's like they either someone gets a good job where they're fortunate to get out. Some, you know, hate to say it, it could be a death in the family and they inherit the money. Someone take a job in another location, another um, state or city. So it's, it's a real, it's a, it's reality of what black people experience. Not all black people. That's not, my point. I'm not saying it's, it's this, all black people. Right. But so this, this is the point I'm getting at, that the show was so like ubiquitous in the black community that there were, there were extremes on TV, all right? You were either the poor black people like the Evans or you were the wealthy black people like the Jeffersons and the Cosbys. The the people in the middle weren't well represented. Okay, so what about what's happening now? They, well, just what's happening? You mean what's happening or what's happening now? I mean, I'm sorry, what's happening? <laughs> I'm sorry. They they weren't they okay, they, they weren't portrayed as like poor, but they weren't they were closer to they were closer to the Evans than they were the Jeffersons. Of course, but they had they I would say they had a house. Mm -hmm. They're not. They were not living in the ghetto, but they were like. I guess they were sort of like school kids. Yeah. I guess, but adults too, in a way. And they hung out at this diner mm -hmm. with Big Shirley, mm -hmm. and you know they had different things they talked about. So I think it was like a little bit of a step up. It but, was just that was just black happy days to me. Like it's no, it okay. it wasn't it wasn't representative of anything. You know, as much as we liked, I can't remember what's the name of the show. What's happening? As much as we like what's happening, I love. You know, we love watching rerun and and, and Raj and everybody. Right. Whose life was like theirs? Like, think about this. Think about this seriously. Who do you know? And we've blown. We've grown up in black communities and we know black people. 
as much as black people love that show, how many people say, yeah, I can actually relate to, to them? No I don't one. know. I no don't, one. I, we don't, I don't <laughs> no know one. everyone, so I well, can't no, well, say. Well, true. But I cannot say that. So I can say but, it. I cannot relate. Do you know someone who, who lives in the ghetto? I can only speak. What? Do you know someone living in the projects? Of course. Right. So you can. That's my well, point. Hold on. Hold on. Not everyone lives in the projects and is struggling. And not everyone is going to the diner every day with Big Shirley. You know what I'm saying? Not everyone owns a laundromat. And not everyone's family has a doctor and a lawyer in the house. Though what I'm saying is like the people who were in the middle weren't well represented. And it made it seem like it normalized that, oh, it's just normal for black people to be living in the projects and struggling and struggling well, with work. Well, of course, work. That's, they're going to push that, neg- I mean, that narrative because that's what they want people to see. Is that that's the way we we all to work to normalize it, and right. I, that's my whole okay, point. That so, the show right. is almost like propaganda, and I'm not saying it was purposely made that way. I don't think it was. There may, I think there may there may be some people on the in, on the back end like, yeah, yeah, let's keep pushing this message. But anyway, it's one of those things where it became so normal. That's like the view. It became so popular. Is what I mean. That like that became like the view of inner city black people is that like they're all poor and struggling Mm -hmm. and that's just not the case and i think you know looking back on good times now like i used to love watching that show even as an adult i I would watch it rerun sometimes now i can't watch it because i'm I'm, i look at it like yeah you're looking this is normalizing this is normalizing being poor and desperate all the time right and that's not the reality for a lot that is reality for some people i'm not i'm not saying it's not but that becomes everyone's reality when that's what's popular. Right. And it's not. I get it. And just like um, like I said, it's, it's like extremes. Because on the other opposite extreme was the Cosby's in the 80s. Well, you got let's go to the Jefferson. How many people you know live in, in the penthouse? Right. And, you know. Own a successful business and able to move from their place. They, and they lived in the suburbs. They didn't even live in the projects, I don't think. Because they were Archie Bunker's neighbors. Right, so yeah, yeah. So they moved from you know a regular suburb to, uh, you know, so, penthouse. So you're so let's look at it. If you're looking at good times, then you're looking at if you're looking at Archie Bunker and Jefferson's was part of that. Mm-hmm. They living in the suburbs now. They're living up, you know, in a condo penthouse apartment in the sky. In the sky, whatever. And how many people you saw that lived that lifestyle? No, I didn't know any. Right. So when you say when you ask me about um, people living like what's happening, I didn't know any. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they didn't exist. Yeah, me neither. But I can't say that didn't happen. It's not close to the norm, and that's 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 my whole point is that it is not necessarily the rule that black people live in the projects and struggle. There are a lot of black people living in the projects and a lot of black people that struggle. Yes. Which makes the good times seem like it's more normal. Than it really is, because it's it's almost like it's relatable. Some well, of the things yeah. they do in that is relatable. I grew I was I grew up in the projects when I was little, so like I I related to a lot of stuff. They okay, were so through. did you have good times when you were living in? Of the course, projects? of okay. course. So that's why it's they yeah. good times. But but, but looking gonna... back on it, I'm like, why is it? Why is? But it just is... getting why is just getting by good? Well, it's, I... it's not, and that's why I'm saying it's normalizing, like. It's hey, as long as y'all just get by, y'all should be good, and that's that's the Is part that of what it. You see? Right, like, hey, hey, y'all, you know, you should be fine with just getting by. You don't want too much; you just want enough to get by, and you should be okay with that. And that's what I'm saying. Like, good times maybe kind of put a bad message in our heads where, where it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to advance and. And get out of your situation. It was just enough to get by. Like, as long as I got by, it's okay. And it's not. It's but, not. Okay, but let's just let's look at this. We all looked at good times. But a lot of us are not living in those times. Mm-hmm. We advance. Because we did not want to be in that situation. We wanted better. We saw that they wanted better. So it was, I felt like... Yes, I can understand what you're saying. It normalized it, but it also, for some of us, said that's not the life we want to live. Mm-hmm. So we want to do better. We're not going to be in that situation. So it was a push to say this is not what you have to settle for. 
Right. So And I know some people, you know, everybody looks at things differently and be like, Oh, it's okay, you know, they did all right, whatever. And then some people are like, Yeah, they did all right, but that that's not enough. Yeah. It just depends on the person. All right. True. True. Okay. So let me let me let me just say this. Take a show like Beverly Hillbillies. The Beverly Hillbillies is like a caricature of like hill folk. Mm-hmm. Like, and you would just say, like, you know, white hill folk from wherever, right? And that stereotype. Well, that's very, like, a specific stereotype. There's no one who who correlates the Beverly Hillbillies lifestyle and thinks and, and, and branches that out to, like, majority of white people across the country. It's, you know, they're not watching Beverly Hillbillies and saying, well, yeah, this is, this is what white people like in the United States. No. They, that's like a specific thing, hillbillies. The way Good Times normalized like black people in the projects, it made it seem like that was normal everywhere. Okay. For black people, mm-hmm. and that's that's my issue. Okay, I can see that because you had two separate with right. the hillbillies. You, you had separated. You had the rich per- people, and then you had the hillbillies. Right, and the hillbillies were like they were like making fun of them. You know, like they were yes. like a specific. Thing yeah, yeah, they that, were saying yeah. this is a small group of hillbillies. Everybody's not like them. Right. Where right. you had, when you look at good times, you didn't. You, Most of the people they interacted with were other people in the projects. Right. Who or, were just like them. And then, you and know. Except for had, like Alderman Davis and whoever. And you had know. the pimp. And, uh, Lenny. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, sorry. Forgot about Lenny. I got plenty. And, Sh- and Sweet Daddy Williams. Like. These are the things that See, became okay, normalized. Okay, I got for you because you can bring it down. No, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm hot right now thinking about it. I'm glad you brought that up. Sweet Daddy Williams, the the lone right, shark. Right, I get what you're saying. You it, know, it 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 made it seem it there was no level up for black people. Like right. they never really interacted with someone saying like they had money or middle class and like let's you know let's help you get to the next level. It's not even us help. It's just like just. But not was, even being, not even making it feel like it was okay. Yeah, that's why I'm just saying that, like, you know, good times isn't. Yeah, Lenny would, you know. Yeah, it's. <sighs> because you had, they brought in Nigerian when. Uh, yeah, the fufu. You said you're going to eat the fufu, you got to put your hands in the water. I don't know. You don't remember all that? No, eBay. His name was eBay. Yeah, well. And then you know, remember um, Lou Gossett Jr. was uh, trying to date Thelma. Well, what we really want to know is what the hell is an old man like you doing going on? He was, was he? Yes. Was it Lou Gossett Jr.? It was Lou Gossett I'm gonna look Jr. that up. I'm gonna stick a clip in. Yeah, Lou Gossett Jr. He was like in his 40s, and I think Thelma was turning 18. She was 17, and James and um, Florida. It? Florida. Was like Jane was like tight. He was tight. Like, dude, this is my daughter, and why you want to be with her? And you know that type of stuff. It's sort of like there, there was some there was some shows that had messages. In it, show. The message was yeah. what you see now when you talk about predatorial men, men preying on young women, and women preying on young men. But anyway, Jada. At, did you what was it? Jada. Okay, well, what, what, predator too. Like, don't. Well, you got daddy. I don't know. You I'm just saying. No, 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 no. I'm just saying that we always talk about the men, and we forget that like Jade is a predator too. Jane was Jane, the man. Like, I was scared of James. James Never was met the that man. dude in my life. Yeah, had, had those yeah. tight corduroy pants yeah. with that belt. Yeah, nappy ass hair. Yeah. Um, but anyway. But yeah, there were a lot of episodes that had. It was messages. a lot of great lot of, messages. Yeah, child abuse, you know, venereal yeah. disease, as they call it back then. Why you got to say it like that? VD. VD. I got VD and you the one who gave it to me. <laughs> yeah, venereal um, diseases. It was a lot of education. Yeah, there was a lot of education in that show. That doesn't excuse. It doesn't excuse. What it became and like what it is. And when you think back on it, like how it was maybe a detriment to us in the long run. When you, when you think about these educational uh, shows, did you see that? In any other show? Because I'm thinking it now. Mean? Okay, so we're talking about venereal diseases. Oh, right? there were messages in a whole bunch of shows back in the 70s and 80s. Which yeah. one was though? Like, think about um, like all those shows we watched um, I mean, in the 80s. Like, Webster, uh, was it Webster and yeah, Webster. what was the one? Uh, Silver Spoons? No, not Silver Spoons, but 
The one with um Tootie. Willis. Uh, what you talking about, Willis? Uh, why well, I can't think of the name of that show? Stop. Different strokes. Different strokes. Yeah, you yeah. Gotta it's different shows. strokes and Give Me a Break and all those other shows we watch. Oh, which one was that with Tootie? That was uh the with the girls. Uh, jeez, why oh, I can't think of the name of that show now. Cause I like that show. The one with the four girls and yes. the old lady. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Whatever. I, I, I'll put it up here if I find out. Um. Anyway, a lot of them had messages. So like, different strokes had the one where like the child molester at the bike shop was trying to like proposition the um the boys. You don't remember that? No. Yeah, that was a whole thing. I mean, what what do you think could have been done to show a different light for black people to see that this is not the end of the road? Like, this is not the norm. I, so, I, here's the thing. Like, two of the creators for the show were black. And I don't know if... I think that they were just trying to create opportunity. I, like I said, I don't think this was, like, done intentionally. And I think they were trying to show, like, a different side of black culture. But at the time, it was still kind of a stereotype to black people living in the, in the project. So, they were kind of, like, leaning into it a little bit. I don't Like I said, I don't think they did it on purpose. But I also think they were trying to expose people to you know black culture that almost project hood culture a little what bit they where they foresee black culture as well. right and it, we will push and good times kind of push back on some of those stereotypes you know like you had the episode about like black jesus and you know it was all kinds of oh yeah because michael evan was he right was he's a militant <laughs> like there was a lot of social um social commentary in those shows which i really appreciate I'm just saying that, like, overall, it's, it, it, I don't know. I think it might have done more harm than good. Like, you could have done a lot of those messages with a show about a black family that didn't live in the projects. Like, okay, they so, didn't have to be rich, just maybe not living in the projects. Okay, so you take the you take good times. Now you're looking at Je- the Jeffersons. Mm-hmm. The Jefferson George didn't put up with a lot of stuff. It, it showed a different light. Like, he was very vocal about, you know, stereotyping mm-hmm. and, you know, racism. And he said what he, he wanted to say. Yeah. So, it, you know. It was something to admire, like, seeing a black man, you know, be successful like that. And and keeping his, being himself, even though he, you know, his lifestyle had changed. But, like I said, you know, when it comes to television, it was always, like, in these streams, like, Black people either really poor or they're abnormally wealthy. Okay, so let's go here. Saffron and Son. They were poor. They he were, owned were his own junkyard. Broke as shit. He owned, yeah, he owned a junkyard. Now, let me just say, Sam's Son is one of the shows I love to watch every day with my granddad. That's a show where it also kind of normalized like the, the struggle culture. Yeah. The show that depicts what Black people are experiencing. Yes, but not all of them. That's what, that's my, and that's my point. And I get that it's not all of them, but it's a great majority. Right. You can talk about that. You can talk about that and still have a normal black family. Like a normal, I, I, average, normal? middle class. Hold on, I'm talking about a middle class black family. Because it sends a different message. And that's that's my whole point. I get it's, it's not, I'm not saying don't acknowledge that there's black people in the projects or black people that are struggling. Right. What I'm saying is don't make that the focus so that people think that that's normal. And then we start to think that it's normal and we're okay with it. No. Because we're, we shouldn't be okay with it. I get it. You're right. So tell me this. When the Cosby Show came in, oh my God, did you see how black people are up in a war tomorrow? Nobody lives like that. You don't have a lawyer and a doctor. We, as black people, talked about a show that was for us. Right. And that's another thing. Why do we talk so badly about shows that are for us? Okay, so when it came to the Cosby Show, like, 80, I was young. I looked at the Cosby Show because it was entertaining, not because I thought it was anyone's reality. I didn't know any doctors. I didn't know any lawyers. Okay. Um, I lived in, when that show first came out, I lived in, in the projects, so, like, have them in their house was like that was abnormal to me and their wealthy uh, friends and relatives and whatnot so what was maybe a little off-putting to some black folks is that like like i said it went from an extreme we went from good times to this family that doesn't represent so many of us it represents some the ones who went to school became really successful and, and pretty wealthy it represents their lifestyle but that's still like, 
you know, if the, if if the if the black population is this, then like this is the people that Good Times represents. This is the middle, and this is the people that the Cosby Show represents. Okay. Well, these people in the middle are getting left out either way. Okay, hold on. You're saying the people in the middle. What does the middle represent? Like, who are those people in the middle? Just regular, regular Joes. What's what regular Joes? Somebody who's just got a regular job, like. Okay, um, so if you're living in the, I mean, you mean to tell me someone who's in this category when you're talking about in the low end, they don't have a regular job? No, I'm not saying they don't. I'm saying it's like their their living conditions and where they live and like the the struggle because like on TV the Evans always struggle. That was the thing about them. They were and always you, struggling. You can't struggle in a house. Yes, I'm. I'm not saying but it's got to be a house. I'm saying that like lifestyle, like they lived in the hood and they struggled. It's not that they were living in the hood. Like people can live in the hood and be fine. Okay. They lived there and they struggled. Okay. So what I'm saying is there wasn't like that middle group where people who even if they lived in like, uh, you know, maybe not the greatest neighborhood, but they weren't struggling, um, or a little further up like uh, family matters, right? Carl and, and, you know, his wife, they had, like, regular jobs. Carl was, like, a police officer. I don't know. I forget what the wife did. But they were, like, regular people had a regular house. And they were, they more represented, like, the the, the middle class black family than anybody else. Okay, so let me just say this. The Cosby Show, I think, um, took place, like, in New York. You may be somewhere in the middle. So I feel like that could have been a middle class family. Because, hold on. Yes, she's a lawyer. Yes, he's a doctor. And that's an extreme because you're coming from good times to this position. Where you have a lawyer and you have a doctor. And they live in a nice um, brownstone. Now, at that time, I don't know what the, the average salary would have been for a doctor or a lawyer. But they had four kids and they live very well. They were educated. When you don't know people like that, you automatically be like, well, nobody lives like that. Nobody's. No, I nobody. Never, but you said you didn't know no, anyone. Right, I said I did. And so when you don't know anyone, you feel like no one lives like no, that. I, I don't, no, I'm, I'm saying, not saying I'm you. Not, yeah. I'm saying there were some people. people like that, yeah. There were some people with all the comments out there. Somebody, nobody lives like that. Nobody. Oh, so you're a doctor. You got, you, you know, you trying to be more than like, you're actually taking a TV show and making it personal when he was basically trying to show that there are people of color who have decent jobs, who are educated and have a family and live better lives than the people that live in the ghetto or in the projects, you know, in low income area. You can you don't have to accept this lifestyle. You can evolve. You can change your situation to be better. It takes time. So and that I, I, happens overnight. I agree. I don't think the Cosby Show was bad for black people. I just said it doesn't necessarily represent most black people. But I didn't say it was bad. Like it was encouraging, honestly. When you say most black people, what? Do you it, like the majority of black folks aren't doctors and lawyers. Okay. That's just like the majority of white people aren't doctors and lawyers. So. Mm-hmm. A show about a doctor and lawyer white couple isn't normal. Is it wouldn't be representative of the majority of them. Right. So, okay. what I'm saying is like the Cosby Show, even though even though it doesn't represent the majority of black folks, it at least encouraged encourage, encourage at least encouraged black people to like start thinking about maybe going to school. Yes, it um, did. Or or doing something different with their lives, not being not living in the hood and stuff like that. Whereas Good Times normalized living in the hood and struggling it did. that was that was where i was saying that like the cosmic show they never talked about struggling so you like you're looking at them like oh man like they're not struggling like what are they you know what are they doing so like that's more even though it doesn't represent all of us it is more encouraging but i do think they talked about a time like they how hard they had to work and go to school because they wanted their kids to do better right. and they didn't just give them everything like you know uh, what's the name had the theo had to get the um gordon got trail shirt no, he chose because he wasn't trying to pay for the Gordon Cartrell shirt. Yeah. But anyway, it was a great show. You know, despite what the man did, we're not talking about that. We're talking about just the show and how it was a great representation of people of color, black people during that time. Because I really enjoyed the show. And yeah. I'm glad the spinoff from Lisa going to college which brought in a different world. I know my parents loved me. Stand behind me, come. 
but different world was a great representation of kids going to school now it definitely made young black people want get interested in going to college because yeah. a lot of us either got a job or went into the military yeah that and school days because it came out around the same time yeah um, it was it because black people didn't know most of us didn't know about college like going into college and having wanted to have that experience that we saw on television make friends join a sorority or fraternity like that was a great representation of us coming together as a community there was no drama like you got your girl this and that and you know but it wasn't uh, wasn't any game banging it was a great representation compared to what we have today with the real housewives of whoever just to, think to, about it to bring it all back back anyway, to the program at hand anyway good times was bad influence y'all good time wasn't i mean it in the way that you're saying to make people think that's all we had and that's all we could be yes but there was a lot of messages and i think it also helped people to see that they did not want to stay in or live that type of life and get caught and stuck in that type of life and so they some people excel while others felt like they got comfortable and say oh it's not so bad from what you were yeah, saying and they get comfortable and the show just made that seem like it was normal if you're just an average person and you've never seen a person die and you see it every day on whatever show you watch then it becomes it doesn't become okay but it becomes normal and that's the same thing that happens when we watch shows like good times for years and years it's not necessarily okay that they were always broken struggling but it became normal and it wasn't that it became okay to think that like well, everybody in the hood is struggling like they are. And that's not the case. Yeah, not you're the saying case. they're trying to normalize it. And I feel like it's a lot of things yeah. that are trying to be normalized that we have to push back and be like, no, that's not the norm. Yeah, good times. That's not who we are. Good times ain't the norm, y'all. So anyway, thank you. I'm sorry, you know, we stood on the soapbox for so long. Bye. Bye.